The Super Adventure Box patch on April 16th came with a number of interesting world versus world changes, related to both profession balance, as well as some structural changes to the game map. And while the overall list of changes was relatively short, I think these are deceptively impactful changes that are going to change the way that world versus world works in a big way. In this video, we're going to break down some of those changes, talking about what they are and how they're going to change the game mode going forwards. We'll start with the profession changes and discuss what they mean for the meta overall, and then move on to changes to core world versus world mechanics. And as always, these sections are timestamped, and you can skip to the particular topic that you want to hear about. Starting with balance changes, we have nerfs primarily to Scrapper, Chronomancer, Berserker, and Hollowsmith. Since the change to Arc Divider in the June 27th balance patch of last year, damage professions and support professions have been locked in an arms race. World vs. World fights are won by generating downs, so in response to Arc Divider's buff, groups began running barrier professions like Support Scourge to pad group health and prevent down states to high damage abilities, as well as improve res utility. This led groups to bring Hollowsmith as a means of generating even more spike damage with overheat, with that eventually turning into the triple or even quadruple support meta that we live in today to counteract the amount of damage generated. Berserker and Hollowsmith spike damage is so high that you only need a handful of them to generate downs, and the damage reduction of Photonic Blasting Module is the beginning of that damage output being reduced, making it more difficult for a single Hollowsmith to generate downs with a well-placed overheat. Meanwhile, the target cap reductions to Prime Light Beam and Scorched Earth make it more difficult for both Berserker and Hollowsmith to spread their damage across an entire squad, forcing them to place their skills more carefully. Support nerfs, on the other hand, are slightly reducing the effectiveness of Support Scrapper, in particular its barrier output, while the Chronomancer nerfs are aimed at sharing Chaos Aura with allies. Support Scrapper's barrier output was probably a little overtuned, but the Chaos Aura change, along with the target cap reductions on Prime Light Beam and Scorched Earth, I actually think are designed to take aim at another persistent issue in World vs. World. Skill lag. Now, this is my personal theory. None of this is confirmed by ArenaNet, and I don't have any hard data to back it up, just my experiences as a player. But in that experience, skill lag feels like it's caused by three things. Pet and minion pathing calculations, condition applications, and boon applications. These three effects are expensive to track and calculate, and in theory, many of these patch changes should help to mitigate skill lag. Prime Light Beam and Scorched Earth are both major sources of burning applications, and spread this burning to a large number of targets, while Chaos Aura spreads both random condition and boon applications when granted to allies or when enemies strike a player with Chaos Aura. It's still too early to tell whether this will actually make a contribution towards improving skill lag, and I haven't really had any fights yet that would be big enough to generate it normally, but it's possible that these changes will help make the game mode a bit more playable. But balance changes aren't the only changes that we got in this patch. We also got some major changes to some of World vs. World's core systems. The one that's generated the most discussion so far is a change to how repairing damaged walls and gates works. Previously, repairing a wall or a gate to 10% would restore the existence of that wall, preventing groups from moving in and out of damaged spots in an objective. Now, that repair threshold is 50%, meaning that groups need to commit much larger amounts of supply, players, and time in order to repair objectives and prevent groups being able to move into them. And this has been a divisive change, with groups that spend more time attacking and fighting generally a fan of the changes, and groups that spend more time roaming and defending generally not a fan. I definitely have a bias here, as somebody who spends most of his time playing and commanding in organized coordinated groups, and the changes to wall and gate repair will definitely take some adapting and getting used to, but I don't think that they're as bad as people make them out to be. Yes, it's easier for an attacking group to move in and out of a structure once a wall is destroyed, but it's also much more difficult for those groups to get their respawns back if the gates and walls are successfully repaired. Extended fights inside of an objective are now much more dangerous for an attacking group, because every player who's defeated inside that objective has a much harder time eventually getting back to tag. These respawns are also more vulnerable to Havoc groups and roamers, and siege that they set up to try and break into an objective again is much easier to destroy. The changes also place a greater importance on siege and supply lines, 
incentivizing smaller groups to capture and hold camps, disrupt enemy supply lines, and scout approaching enemy groups in advance, so that appropriate defenses can be constructed beforehand. This is a big change to how scouting and roaming has historically worked in the game mode, but I think the eventual outcome will be that structured defense rewards active player participation, rather than stall and delay tactics. World vs. World at the end of the day is a PvP game mode, and it shines when players fight one another rather than NPCs or destroyable objects. That said, in previous patches, ArenaNet has suggested that they want Keep Lords to play a more active role in a fight. The first iteration of this idea was to give Lords a break bar at 75% and 25% that channeled healing to nearby players as long as the defiance bar wasn't broken. An idea which I said at the time was interesting, but so weak that it could be safely ignored by most groups. That ability has now been augmented by also applying stability to defending players while the break bar is active. And this is a much more significant change. Knowing that a lord will pulse both healing and stability incentivizes defending groups to push and attack while this ability is active, preventing an attacking group from interrupting the channel and putting them at a disadvantage in terms of the boons and healing available to a defending group. This is a much more interesting way of giving defending players an advantage while in a structure. And while I still don't think that these changes are good enough, for example the radius on the stability is pretty small, it is an interesting design direction, and promotes players fighting other players at strategic times during the defense of an objective. Last, a number of changes to how capture points work have also been made, with the reduction to the capturable radius of most objectives in the game. For camps in particular, these circles are now very small, forcing more active defense participation and preventing players from hiding behind walls, pillars, houses, and other structures to prevent capture progress. It's possible, given the changes to structure repair, that camps may now actually be too easy for large enemy groups to capture, given their importance for generating supply for eventual repairs and defense. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be interested in watching over the coming weeks. But in general, these changes are good for forcing fights and making players dive into the ring for that last ditch desperate attempt at defending successfully. So that's pretty much it for the changes in this balance patch. But I do want to highlight one thing, and that's about patch timing. The last balance patch we got was on March 19th, and to be honest with you, I was very surprised that we got any world versus world balance changes in this patch at all. A common complaint from a lot of world versus world players has been the frequency, or lack thereof, with which balance patches are released. And I'm excited that the balance team seems to be moving towards smaller and faster adjustments to profession balance, rather than doing one massive patch every quarter. I'm hopeful that that's a trend that continues, because I think it would be a very healthy thing for the game mode to get a small balance patch every month or two, as it would promote build diversity, theory crafting, and experimentation for many different players, without letting the overall meta stagnate too heavily. But I also know that a lot of the changes in this patch have been contentious, so if your perspective is different from mine, I'd love to hear about your thoughts in the comments below. You can also like the video or subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of discussion about the game mode, and if you want to chat about some of these changes and what they mean in real time, I stream World vs. World on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. But until then, I've been Chef, and enjoy the rest of your day.